10 Key Habits of Successful Entrepreneurs. You know, more businesses fail than succeed by far. In fact, I think most businesses are fail within the first five years, a bunch fail within the first year, and certainly by the time you get five years out, the vast majority of them have failed. And yet it's ironic because we live in a time and a day and age now when it's probably the easiest it's ever been to start a business. It's probably the least expensive it's ever been also because we can do things digitally and with technological advancements, it makes it a lot easier to require a lot less capital to get started. Now, there might be a lot of different reasons for why this can happen. I mean, really, there's no limit to the number of reasons because each individual case is its own case. And sometimes things are outside of our control. Sometimes they're things that we could have pre prevented or fixed. But as entrepreneurs, regardless, we wanna put ourselves in the best position possible. So we have the greatest chance of success. I mean, if we know that the odds are not very good, but it's a passion that we really want to be able to pursue and it's something that we want to do as a lifestyle, then it makes logical sense that we want to set ourselves up for success by doing all the right things. And so in studying entrepreneurs who are successful and who have been able to build profitable businesses, there are some clues, there are some common threads, there are some key traits or habits that they all commonly demonstrate. And so if we take a closer look at those traits, we can ensure in ourselves that we're able to cultivate those same traits so we can maximize our chances of making it work. So let's talk about 10 traits or habits. And it's equally important as we go through these to, to realize that for businesses that fail, many times the entrepreneurs behind them lack one or more of these. So it isn't just that if we increase our odds of success, if we cultivate them, but it's also that we actually increase our odds of failure if we don't. So the first of these, and they're traits and habits, it's, they're not all one or all the other, so it's easier just to break it down into traits and habits. The first one is vision and clarity. You know, successful entrepreneurs have a clear, compelling vision for their business. You know, they, they understand what it is that they want to achieve and they create plans on how to get there because that clarity is going to help them stay focused and motivated even during tough times. It's also going to be their compass for decision making. You know, some entrepreneurs and some people get into business for the wrong reason. The reason is I want to get away from my terrible boss. I want more freedom in my life. I want to be able to you know, be my own boss and, and do sort of the things that I want to do. Or maybe I have an interest in this one particular thing or I enjoy this one particular thing, so I'm going to start a business in it. Well, it might, you might be along the right track with that because obviously we want to do things we're passionate about. At the same time, building a business is a different skill set than being a technician in whatever it is that we're doing. So just because I love to, you know, groom dogs doesn't mean that I know how to start a dog grooming business. They're different skills. And oftentimes as the owner or the CEO or the, you know, entrepreneur that's behind it all, I might not actually be the one being the technician anyway, certainly not for long. I mean, if I have a small business and I'm a solopreneur and I'm by myself, then I might be washing all the dogs and grooming them too. But at some point, if I want to build a growing business, I'm going to need to be able to step back from actually doing the actual work and hiring other people to be able to do it. And so it's important to recognize and understand that. If we get into business for the wrong reason or for a reason other than we have a clear vision that we want to achieve and it's more for other reasons, then we fall susceptible to the trap of not really knowing where we're going. So we make knee-jerk decisions or we make decisions based on gut that aren't really driven with any main purpose in mind other than possibly survival. If we come into it with a clear vision and a focus, then we know what it is that we want to achieve. So every decision that we make, we can look through that lens in order to make those decisions. And if we do that, we're going to make better decisions that are aligned with where it is that we want to go. So having that clear vision right up front 
is super important and it's something that every entrepreneur should want to do. No matter what business we want to go into, if we haven't started it, we want to make sure we crystallize that. If we're already in it and we're already doing it, we still want to make sure that we have that crystallized so we can maximize our chances of being able to make that come to, come to fruition. The second thing that successful entrepreneurs do is they're very good at risk management. You know, entrepreneurship in, you know, in its inherently in it is risk. You know, in order for us to be able to, to, to gain anything, to create anything, we have to risk something. That's just the way that it works. And so while both successful and unsuccessful entrepreneurs take risks, the difference is successful ones are better at managing them. You know, so they can evaluate the potential downside. They don't jump into things, you know, two feet forward without thinking or looking or, or evaluating the possibilities. We want to evaluate potential downside. We want to have a contingency plan. So, yes, there's risk. Yes, we understand that there's possibility for this to not work. But we also, you know, maximize our chances of success and we, and we limit those risks to ones we can sustain, to ones that we can absorb if they don't go well. You know, successful entrepreneurs aren't reckless. They take calculated risks. I remember um, hearing somebody, and I don't remember if it was Warren Buffett, but it was some very famous successful entrepreneur business person. And they basically said that, you know, somebody asked them, well, how do you know, you know, when you buy a business or you're, you know, re, you know fixing up a business or whatever, how do you evaluate whether or not, do you know, to take that risk and, and how do you manage all that? I mean, if it's millions or billions of dollars, isn't that really stressful? And I remember their answer was really great. They said, you know, what we do is I look at all the potential scenarios and I consider what the worst case scenario is. You know, obviously the best case scenarios are great, but they don't really matter because if we achieve those, there's nothing to worry about. The only thing that really matters in terms of our evaluation of it, once we know there's enough upside to make it, you know, desirable in the first place, is to figure out if the bottom falls out of this thing, what is the worst possible thing that can happen? And can I live with that? And if the answer is yes, I make the deal and I, and I work tirelessly to make sure the worst outcome doesn't happen. If the answer is no, I don't do the deal. So no matter how big the potential return is, if the, if the downside, if the loss would be catastrophic, would be, you know, end game type situation, then, you know, you don't do it. And so that's the difference. Everybody needs to be able to be a risk taker if they're going to be an entrepreneur. But if we're going to be successful, we have to be calculated about it. And we have to think things through and make sure that we're making good decisions. It's not based on impetuousness or just spur the moment, you know, off the cuff decision making. The third thing that successful entrepreneurs do is that they learn from failure. You know, successful entrepreneurs view failures as learning opportunities. It's, it's, it's a different mentality. If we go into something and we try it and it doesn't work, and the way that we talk to ourselves about that is, I'm a failure, this didn't work, you know, I'm not any good at this, I, I should have known this would never work, those kinds of things, that's self-defeating. And we get to a point where we, we, we lose the courage to continue to do anything we also lose perspective because the reality of it is successful entrepreneurs have all failed. Whether they failed on a grand scale and entire businesses have gone down or whether they failed with an individual project or an idea or whatever it is, it doesn't matter, we've all failed. But successful entrepreneurs look at that as an opportunity to learn. And what they do is they say, what can be, you know, what lessons can we draw from this? And how can we incorporate that into our decision making going forward and into our, our entire scope of the way that we operate? So every failure, in addition to every success, makes them stronger, makes them better, makes them more efficient, makes them more optimized. Because they have a better understanding now of what works and what doesn't. They have a better understanding of the warning signs, things to look for, things to avoid, and they rarely make the same mistake twice. So they're unlikely to fall victim to the same thing. They might make another mistake, 
but each time they make a mistake, they adjust, they, they rechart the course and get closer and closer to where they're going. You know, it reminds me of the Thomas Edison, you know, uh, story about him creating the, the carbon filament for the light bulb. When he was creating the, creating the light bulb, it was actually the filament, but when he was creating the light bulb and he had tried all these other things, he had notebooks full of all the experiments that he did and all the ways that didn't work. And a young reporter was interviewing him and he said, you know, Mr. Edison, like, when are you going to stop with this nonsense? Like, obviously it isn't working. You failed over 10,000 times. And he said to the guy, you don't understand. I didn't fail 10,000 times. I got 10,000 times closer to the way that will work. And that is, it's exactly the same thing in two completely different perspectives. And you can see why he invented the light bulb and the other guy was a reporter reporting about it because that was the mentality he had. The other guy felt as though if you had done something that many times and it didn't work, you should give up, right? So successful entrepreneurs analyze what went wrong, make adjustments, and move forward with the new insights. So they're always improving. Unsuccessful entrepreneurs give up too quickly. They repeat the same mistakes because they didn't learn from them. And they don't track their progress or their results so they don't remember where they've been. And they, they, they can fall victim to the same problems over and over again. The fourth key trait for entrepreneurs, and this is actually one of my favorites, and I actually think that in today's day and age, it's probably more important than it's ever been, is adaptability. The ability to pivot and adapt to changing market conditions, competitive conditions, technological advancements, whatever you want to call it, is a hallmark of successful entrepreneurship. If you study the most successful entrepreneurs in history, very, very few of them had started off with a particular idea to create something or do something and ended in the same place that they started. Many of them ended up charting a new course, reversing course, going in a totally different direction, ending up somewhere so far away from where they thought they were going to be. Because they went into the situation with an idea, they started to work, and then they paid attention to the results that they were getting. They paid attention to the feedback they were getting. Is what we're doing getting us closer to the goal or further away? Are there things outside that, uh, of our own control that are impacting what we're doing that we might need to account for? Because we don't control the environment. We don't control the economy. We don't control technology. These are all forces that push against us. We don't control competition. So the fact is, in order to be successful, yes, we need to be working and we need to be focused and doing all of our thing, but we also have to keep our head up and make sure that we're aware of what's going on and that we are you know, predicting to the best degree that we can what's coming so we can make you know, adaptations and changes. So the more nimble we are, the more agile we are as a, as a company and as an entrepreneur and an individual, the, the more adaptable our entire company will be and the more potential for success we'll have because very few things are static. So those who succeed are often quick to respond to changes in consumer preferences. I remember when COVID hit and um, one of the fascinating things for me as an entrepreneur looking at other people's businesses and how they operated, in particular, the industry that fascinated me was restaurants because restaurants were ones that were hit particularly hard. If you rely on having people come into your establishment, sit down, eat meals, pay you and pay your waiters and waitresses tips and order drinks, which is where all the profit margin is in the restaurant business, and all that goes away, what do you do? How do you survive? Well, the answer is some didn't. Some didn't figure it out. Some said, you know, we're too reactive. We're just going to try to wait it out or see what we can do. And they ended up going out of business. But there are a couple of, of restaurants around us in particular that I was actually really impressed with, with how fast they were able to adapt and pivot. There's one restaurant in particular that's about a, two miles from, from my house. And they um, adjusted really fast to doing takeout orders and they adjusted their menu to make it more takeout friendly and they instituted a, a texting system where you could text them 
pull into a car, they, they put up numbered slots in the parking lot. You could pull into the slot and just text them and they would come out with the order to your car. So this was all in the course of right after the mandate for all restaurants to close and not allow people in anymore. Within, I would say a week, maybe 10 days, they had this entire thing implemented. And I don't know, obviously I'm not an owner of the business. I don't know financially how that worked. What I do know is we ordered from there a number of times and there were always a parking lot full of cars. So I'm gonna to venture to guess that they didn't suffer very much during COVID. And then when it reopened, they went back to business as normal. They still kept that other stuff too. So you can still get takeout orders easier if you want. But the fact is they not only weathered the storm, they're, they're going strong and they've opened other locations as well. So they were able to do it because they were adaptable, because they recognized this is an existential threat to our business. If we can't have customers come in and sit down and eat, what are we gonna do? And they fixed it. So consumer preferences, technology, industry trends, you know, things like COVID, right? We have to be able to adapt. The fifth thing is financial discipline. Successful entrepreneurs manage their finances meticulously. They understand that the finances are the way that they, the, the, you know, the gas that's gonna fuel the engine to keep going. So if we don't budget effectively, if we don't keep our expenses under control, and we let that stuff run roughshod, when it's small, it doesn't matter much. And when times are good, it doesn't matter much. So sometimes we loosen the belt, we get a little bit free spending with stuff. And the problem with that is then when times get tough, we have to cut really fast, and then we wish we had the money back that we spent on other things. So smart entrepreneurs, successful ones, ensure that they have enough capital to cover both expected and unexpected challenges. They understand and are aware of the fact that things that they can't foresee might come up and impact them, and they need to be able to weather that storm. The sixth thing that successful entrepreneurs do is they actively build their network. This is one I'm guilty of. I should have been much, much better at this a lot younger. It's one of the biggest regrets in my business life is that I wasn't good enough. I didn't spend enough time and enough focus on building my network. Networking is crucial in entrepreneurship. Successful entrepreneurs actively build and maintain a network of contacts who can provide support, advice, business opportunities, guidance, mentorship, whatever. Just feedback on stuff that we're doing, whether it's a mastermind group with other entrepreneurs and we share ideas, whether it's you know partners, suppliers, whatever, people where we have synergies and we can work together. Having a Rolodex of people and that we connect with on an ongoing basis so we can stay in touch with what's going on allows us the opportunity to learn from other people, learn from other people that are doing what we do, even if they're in different industries, get new ideas, opportunities to work together in joint venture, and find out how to solve problems faster and easier than reinventing the wheel all the time. So successful entrepreneurs invest time in nurturing these relationships because they recognize the value. The seventh thing is a customer focus. You know, we might fall in love with our product, we might fall in love with our service, but successful entrepreneurs fall in love with their customers. Because if we keep a strong focus on the customer's needs and preferences, then we aren't trying to force something that we love on other people. What we're doing is figuring out what they love and giving it to them. That's the easiest way to be successful. You don't need to hard sell anybody if you have something that they love and they want and are willing to pay money for. If it's something that you love and you need to convince them to love it, then you might be in a, in a stickier situation. But we wanna continuously seek feedback and use customer feedback to improve our offerings. We can't be sensitive to the point that our ego gets hurt if we get a negative review or if someone's upset. Those are awesome learning opportunities to figure out what things we can fix and improve to make everybody happy. Unsuccessful entrepreneurs might ignore customer feedback or they might just be too slow to respond to it. So what the customer feels is that we don't care about them. The eighth trait of successful entrepreneurs is perseverance. Persistence is key in entrepreneurship. There is no such thing as an overnight success. Successful entrepreneurs keep pushing forward even when faced with setbacks. They have the stamina to endure the challenging phases without losing sight of the goals. And this, by the way, wraps all the way back around to the first thing about the vision. 
If we have the vision for what it is we want to do, it's easy to keep our eyes on that horizon and not get mired in the fact that we're struggling right now. You know, every business, every entrepreneur, every person is going to go through struggles. We need to be able to weather that and keep going. And so perseverance is key. The ninth thing successful entrepreneurs do is delegation and team building. They understand that they can't build a successful business on their own. So knowing when and how to delegate tasks is crucial. We want to get stuff off of our plate that can be done by other people so we can keep focusing on the highest leverage activities. Successful entrepreneurs build competent teams and trust them to handle various aspects of the business, which allows them to focus on strategic growth. And these don't have to be employee teams. They can even be outsourcers. But we need to build a team of people around us to take off of our plate the stuff that we can no longer do because we have to focus on higher level things. And the 10th characteristic is continual learning. Successful entrepreneurs commit to lifelong learning, understanding there's no finish line. It's a constant progression, right? It's a constant uh, keep going, keep improving, and that is basically the way it works. So we're constantly updating our skills and our knowledge. It might include anything from formal education, informal learning opportunities, conferences, industry trades, whatever. And while this is not an exhaustive list of these 10 things, these traits and habits form the foundation. So we want to be sure we're consciously developing them within ourselves. The takeaway here is that while success in business and entrepreneurship can't be boiled down to a list of traits, it's far more complex and involved than that. Like anything in life, we can stack our odds of success higher by having the right skill set. By recognizing the characteristics of successful entrepreneurs, we can evaluate those same traits and habits in ourselves and continue to develop them so we have the greatest possible chance of success.